Hello, it's Aaron Sorensen with VFXCentral.net, and today we're going to be specifically talking about 2D tracking in Adobe After Effects and Mocha. So uh, here's a shot that we used, and here's something that I created. So we have this really cool explosion happening up here in the sky. Um, this explosion, well, parts of this explosion will be available um, within the next month. We uh, hopefully will have a whole bunch of uh, aerial and other cool explosions for you guys and uh, we'll be giving away some of them for free. Before we get started, I'm going to explain a little bit about tracking in Adobe After Effects. So if you click on your layer and you go to animation, you'll see that we have a bunch of different options. We have track camera, track in Mocha AE, warp stabilize, and track motion. Uh, we're really gonna, just going to be looking at track Mocha AE and track motion. If you click on track motion, it'll bring up the uh, videos composition and in here this is where you do the tracking this first box kind of does content aware it kind of um, analyzes what um, is surrounding and then this one is specifically um, what is contrasting so you always want to find a place that has high contrast so if you um, have an area selection like around there and then you choose somewhere that has high contrast like there then you want to basically just move this thing and find a place that um, is contrasting well I'm choosing this point because this um, this is contrasting the background really well. So if you just do that and then you simply hit track forward down here, analyze forward, and uh, you can choose position, rotation, scale, different things like that. For this, we're just going to do position, and uh, you can simply click forward. And uh, you'll see it should stick pretty well. The shot is pretty uh, shaky and handheld, so it's uh, actually doing a really, really good job. So we can just let this analyze forward. Okay, so if we play this back, we can see our track held pretty well. Um, I should have mentioned before we track, there's also this button right here that says Options. And you can actually choose what you want it to contrast, whether it's RGB, luminance, or saturation. I chose luminance, being that this was really dark and the background was brighter. So that's what I chose. And there's also these other things that will help you basically get a better result. Um, your confidence is below 90% or whatever you want. Um, I actually don't know a lot of these, and so... Um, it just really you got to go in and kind of mess around with it. So that's what I did for this. Next we have to apply this tracking information to a, another layer. So what you want to do is right click, do new, null object. Uh, let's rename this tracker one, select it, and then we're going to go to edit target. And uh, we're going to make sure it's on tracker one. Hit OK. And then simply hit apply. It's going to ask us X and Y. That's what we're doing this in. Hit OK. We can see that the null is now connected to where our tracker was. So we can use this to uh, parent things to that layer. For example, if I was to um, connect this, my name, to the tracker right here, what we would do is take this, the parenting whip, and parent it to um, the tracker null, and we can see that it's tracked in there pretty well. Um, now I'm going to show you how to get a better track um, using this track and a couple others. So uh, let's get into that. To get a really solid track, what you need to do is actually track a couple different points in that same area, and uh, then we're going to combine them, and I'll show you a really cool script that you can use to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple other tracks, and then I'll get back to you. Also, one more thing. While tracking, it's really good to actually... Um, play, analyze it forward, and then stop it every once in a while, and it almost like resets and uh, recalculates what's around it, the contrast and uh, whatever the content is around it. So that's a, a little tip is to track forwards, do that, and also um, analyzing it backwards afterwards can also kind of make your track a little bit more solid. Okay, so I got the three trackers set up um, in these different spots, and I actually found out that after I applied it, that it was kind of, it was off actually one frame. I think I had, this frame was still, I don't know why that was, um, so I had to move my um, trackers over one frame. We actually can get a better result if we um, use a script um, that basically takes the average of each of these tracks, and it's called Tracker Viz, and let me show you that. So you can find TrackerViz at aescripts.com and type in TrackerViz. It's a free product. Um, all you have to do is type in zero right here and then do add to cart and you can download it or donate it because it's an awesome plugin. So let me show you TrackerViz. So if you select all three layers of your tracks and you go up to file scripts and you do TrackerViz, it'll bring up a new window. 
then you can just basically choose what you want it to do. And for this, we want it to do the average position. So all we have to do is hit execute. And what it did was created a new tracker. And let me hide these other ones. And so this green square is the average track that was created between all three of those tracks. So uh, if we apply parent it to the new track, um, it should be a lot better because what it's doing is it's calculating the average motion between all three of those. And that's how you're going to get some uh, better results uh, with your tracks. All right, we used the built-in tracker and it did a pretty good job. So now let's jump into Mocha AE and see how that does. So if we click on our layer and we go to animation and go down to track and Mocha AE, it'll uh, warm it up and register layer, hit OK. Okay, so it's really easy to use and there's a lot of different things that I still haven't learned yet. Um, but here's basically what I've learned is use the spline tool and let's just choose this area that's a good high contrast area right click to close it off we can see it's red now and it's ready to uh, be analyzed so this is our track forward button we just will click that and uh, we'll come back when it's done okay we can see that our track held really well in mocha and the reason why is because mocha does a better job at analyzing the content inside of this area and uh, keeping it the same so it held really well and um, there's some other options down here you can turn off or on, like perspective or small motion, or you can uh, get manual with it. I I just really just ran it um, in its auto mode. And then what you want to do is click Export Tracking Data and copy it to Clipboard. Now what this is doing is copying all the information um, about this track, all, all the position, the rotation, everything we have here checked. And um, then we just have to paste it into After Effects. So let's go back into After Effects create a new null just name this tracker now make sure it's at the very beginning and uh, then do paste and we can see it's there but there's a couple problems and things we need to fix is we can see our nulls way over here and our uh, positions right here so what we need to do is uh, press U to see all of our keyframes that created and we need to reset the anchor point so uh, I just turn off the uh, stopwatch and I hit reset and we can see that it held really, really well. I think this holds better than even doing the, tr the uh, tracks in After Effects. Now, you could do three different tracks in Mocha, and then you can use Tracker Viz and get an average position from that. So that's another thing you can do. Next, all I did was dropped in a couple of these effects that I have, and I parent whipped them to the uh, tracker, and we can see that it's parented right here. And this way, it'll follow the same scale, rotation, and everything. And so this is what it started to look like. There's one more thing I want to show you that's really cool that you can do, and that is doing a uh, lens flare that will track in the same position as well. So what you got to do is create a new solid. Let's just do the... Optical flares, drag that in. Let's do them transparent. Oops. And um, let's do screen mode. And so, what we can do is we can take our uh, center position and parent that to the position of the tracker. Let me show you. So, we just take this and we Alt click on the stopwatch and we can grab this and parent it to the position. Now, the reason why it's coming right here is because that's where we had our null um, originally, and I moved the explosion up. So in order to fix this, I'll show you what I did. I took my tracker position, and I made sure all my keyframes were selected. And then I kind of cheated. the. Let's. I should have moved the uh, null first, then move my explosions back down and make that flare right in the middle. So now we have our null, our explosion, and flare all in the same spot. Let's make this uh, flare start right when the explosion goes off. And maybe you could have the brightness go really bright. And then slowly go down to like, let's just say like 50. And then maybe put some flicker on. Let's just crank this up like so. And... Uh, this is kind of the result you get, and it gives it that extra effect um, that it's actually there. There's a lot of 
little tricks you can do. Let's hide our null there. So that really amplifies the feeling of the explosion, I think. And within optical flares, you can really change a lot of things. I would probably change my center position like there. And then uh, maybe go in and add some of the, the dirt and grain um, over that. All right, that's about it for this tutorial. It was a pretty basic tutorial on 2D tracking and Adobe After Effects and Mocha AE. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Also, any requests, please message me or uh, leave your comments. And again, I would love to uh, cater to anything you guys need. Don't forget to check out that Tracker Viz script. It's really powerful. It's awesome. Also, head over to vfxcentral.net where we have a free template, our plasma template created by Josh Badger and uh, some of our free content as well, the uh, Electro Effect and Fireworks, download those. This summer we have some amazing things coming out, so stay tuned.